Hi, I'm Dr. Don, and we are talking about how to have good couples relationships. And I call this lesson veggies and dessert. When I was growing up, my mother had a rule, and that was when we'd go to the grocery store, she'd put the uh, grocery card at the end of the canned vegetable aisle, and she would do one can of every kind of vegetable that there was as you went down the vegetable aisle. And then the worst can that she would get every month would be that can of mixed vegetables because they would take every vegetable that nobody wanted, cut them up into little small pieces, and then dump about two pounds of lima beans in with it. And then to make it even worse, they dump all that juice together. And I can remember when it was mixed vegetable night. You could smell it as you got off of the school bus. We knew we were going to have mixed vegetables. Mom was pretty smart, though. Every time that we had mixed vegetable night, sitting up on the counter would be a big homemade uh, meringue pie, coconut cream, banana meringue, or whatever. And the message was really, really clear. The message was obviously, if you can eat your mixed vegetables, you're going to get some of the pie for dessert. You say, well, what does that have to do with relationships? There is a real powerful theory about what makes for a good couple relationship that's based on social learning theory, based on cost exchange. And it goes something like this. It basically says that in every relationship, there's going to be certain number of rewards. Certain rewards. That's the pie. That's the dessert. That's the payoff. When someone looks at you and says, I want to spend the rest of my life with you, what they are saying is, they are saying, the rewards of being with you are so profound and so powerful that I cannot imagine anyone else in the world being able to give to me the sorts of things that you are able to give to me. And that's a very remarkable and powerful and, and uh, uh, unbelievable compliment. People marry someone, people get into a committed relationship and date somebody because they're saying you have some very positive, powerful things to give to me and I have some very powerful, positive things to give to you and said in very simple terms, let's trade. I will bring these things to the table, you bring your things to the table, and let's trade those back and forth. Now, every relationship is going to have a certain number of mixed vegetables. So, in choice exchange theory, we minus the costs. Here are the things that are going to um, be the negatives that you have to deal with in living with me. So for instance, if you were to live in my house, periodically you're going to see me running through the house trying to find my keys. For whatever reason, when I get highly stressed, I know I'm stressed out because I'm leaving my keys different places. And so one of the costs of being with me is everybody's going to have to look around for dad's keys periodically. So rewards minus costs equal our satisfaction level. People come into my office and they sit down and they'll say, I'm just not real satisfied, I'm not real happy in my marriage right now. Or if they're engaged in dating, they'll say, I'm having, I'm having some worries, I'm having some concerns about this relationship. I, I'm not sure this thing is working. What they're describing there very simply is they're saying, I'm worried that the costs are outweighing the rewards. And what we often have to do in counseling, what I often have to do in couples therapy is, I have to get people to learn how to trade fair. How to trade fairly. Because the rule of thumb is 
no one person should have to eat all the mixed vegetables and the other person gets to eat all the dessert. Everybody ought to have to eat some vegetables and everybody gets a piece of pie. So in relationships that are going south, one of the things we have to do is we have to renegotiate the rewards and the costs. We have to renegotiate the trading in the relationship. Now, how do we go about doing that? And how can you do that on your own? Well, one of the ways you can do that is by knowing and understanding what is rewarding to your spouse. What's the pie? What's the payoff? What do they appreciate? And providing that on a regular basis. The second way you can do that is by minimizing the costs. In other words, what are some of the things that you do that are irritating to your spouse and how can I reduce those a little bit? The more you reduce those, the more you increase the rewards, the payoffs, the dessert that your spouse is having. For instance, if your spouse is constantly saying, you know, I wish we could be on time a little bit more. I wish we weren't running late quite as often. And I'm the one that's constantly causing us late to be late. It will build the relationship if I'll work a little bit on that. And that will up their appreciation and their likelihood to do a little bit better for me as well. A third thing I'm going to have to do if we're going to trade fairly is I'm going to have to be honest with my partner about what it is that I really want. You know, that's a very vulnerable thing to do because if I lay out there and I say, here are the things that I really, really want, that empowers them to be able to either give that to me or keep that from me. And so I'm trusting, if I'm in a relationship, I'm trusting this other person by saying to them, these are some things that I need and I trust you to give those to me as my partner and as the person that I love very, very much. Now, there are a few people that are incapable of trading fairly and I'll mention this just at the end here. Uh, people that are suffering from uh, an addiction are not going to be able to trade fairly uh, because that addiction is going to be driving their reward system. People that are suffering from a particular personality disorder are going to have a difficult time trading fairly because the wiring is not in there to reciprocate with one another. A third group is people that are in cycles of conflict. In one of our other videos we talked about a conflict habituated couple. People that just go from fight to fight. They have to interrupt that fight cycle before they can learn to trade fairly. So what we recommend is we recommend everybody in a relationship be willing to eat their fair share of vegetables, but also make sure everybody's getting a piece of pie as a result.